there's power in games. Yes. And you've recently you've gotten into, uh, recently, I'm not sure you can correct me, uh, mechanism design. Yeah. Uh, it's just, so it's, I mean, first of all, maybe you can explain what mechanism design is and uh, the, the fascinating space of playing with games and designing games. Mechanism design is that you want to, you want a certain behavior to arise, right? If you want to organize, you know, a societal structure or something, you want to have some orderly uh, behavior to arise, right? Because uh, uh, it is important for your goals. But but you know that people, they don't care what my goals are. <laughs> they care about uh, maximizing their utility. So put it crassly, making money. The more money, the, the better, so to speak, right? I'm exaggerating. Self-interest in whatever- Self-interest. In whatever way they- So what you want to do is, um, um, uh, ideally, what you want to do is to design a game so that while people play it so to maximize their self-interest, they achieve the social goal and behavior that I want. That is really the best <laughs> type of thing. And it is a very hard science and art to design these games. And it challenges us to actually come up with a solution concept for a way to analyzing the games that need to be broader. And I think when um, game theory has uh, developed you know, a bunch of very compelling way to analyze the game, that if the game has a best property, well, you can have a pretty good guarantee that it's going to be played in a given way. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, and not surprisingly, these tools have a range of action like anything else. All these uh, so-called the technically solution concept, the way to analyze the game, like dominant strategy equilibrium, if something comes to mind, would be very meaningful, uh, but as a limited power. In some sense, the games that they can be admit such a, a way to be analyzed. It's a very question. specific kind of games and the, the rules are set, the constraints are set, the utilities yes. are all set. Yes, so you can say if you want stronger. to reason, if there is a way, say, uh, that you can analyze a restricted class of games this way. But most games, you know, don't fall into this restricted <laughs> class. Then what do I do? When you need to enlarge a way what a rational player can do. So for instance, uh, in my opinion, at least in some of my, I played with this for a few years and I, uh, I was doing some exoteric things, uh, I'm sure uh, in, uh, in, the, in the space that uh, were, were not exactly mainstream. And then I changed uh, my interest and now I do <laughs> blockchain. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying, for a while I was doing, uh, so for instance, to me is a way in which uh, I design the game and uh, you don't have the best move for you. Mm -hmm. The best move is the move that is best for you, no matter what the other players are doing. Sometimes a game doesn't have that, okay? It's too much to ask. But I can design the game such a way, given the option in front of you, say, oh, these are really stupid for me. Take them aside. But these, these are not stupid. So if you design them, the game so that in any combination of non-stupid things that the player can do, mm -hmm. I achieve what I want, I'm done. Yeah. I don't care to find the, the unique equilibrium, I, I don't give a, a, a damn. I want to say, well, as long as you don't do stupid things and nobody else does stupid things, good social things outcome arise, I should be equally happy. Mm -hmm. And so I really believe that um, um, this type of, of uh, analysis you know, is, uh, is possible and uh, as a bigger uh, radius, so it, it reaches um, more games, more classes of games. And, uh, and after that, we have to enlarge it again. And, uh, and it's going to be, we are going to have fun because uh, human behavior can be conceptualized in many ways. And uh, it's, it's, it's a long game.